Welcome everyone to our Tuesday, May 29th uh, City Council meeting. If we have roll call, please, ma'am, Madam Clerk, to establish quorum. Vicki Snyder? Here. Terry McClung? I am here. Chrissy Kendrick? Here. Bob Thomas? Here. Melissa Green? Here. David Mitchell? Present. We have six. All right. Stand and pledge allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Get a motion to approve the agenda. So moved. So moved. Does anybody have anything? Yes. Um, I've received an email. I'm sorry. From the chair of the planning commission concerning um, her, a request. A B and a CUP moratorium. Yes. I'm about the yeah about a yes. moratorium on cuts. And is it? I'm sorry, I was going to, 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 to add that also. Yeah, um, so I would like to add that to the okay. agenda. And I'll move that. If you I'll have. second that. Thank okay. You. Anybody else? So is that we also have you want new business six. Um, do that. Yes. In item number seven, I'd like to add a uh, resolution deleting Rock Street from the city tra trails or parks trails map. Okay. Okay. Do motion. Okay. Do you need a second Anybody for else? that, Bush? He's no. the mayor. Okay. Anyone else? What was that? Rock Street. Rock, Rock Street. Street. And here is a copy of that. If there's nothing else, can I get a motion to approve the agenda as amended? So moved. So moved. Second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Yes, so moved. Um, Get a motion to approve the minutes. So moved. Second. Any additions, corrections? Hearing none, all those in favor of uh, approving the minutes as submitted, sub signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Opposed. All right. Five one. Mm -hmm. To abstain. Uh, we have. Um, the uh, Planning Commission has a vacancy. Uh, also, the Hospital Commission has a vacancy, too. Mm -hmm. And we do have an application from Cameron. I'm going to mess the name up, probably. Denour. Denour. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, for the parks, for your consideration. Yes, ma'am. I make a motion that we accept Cameron for parks. I'll second that. All right. Any comments? Mm -hmm. All those, all those in favor, sing five by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Get the okay. Well, I'll let Cameron know. To do that. Uh, also, got a vacancy, two vacancies on the cemetery commission. So, if anybody's interested in helping out on cemetery, please let my office know. Uh, which brings us to public comments. Thank you. Uh, my name is Eric Knowles and I live at Two Spur Lane in this city. I come before you this afternoon with two questions. Where is the consensus that Eureka Springs should be debt free? And second, why did Finance Director Lonnie Clark and Mayor Butch Ber Berry fear the Securities and Exchange Commission so much? At the May 14th City Council meeting, Clark reported that he and the mayor want to accelerate paying off two sewer bonds to, quote, get out from the under the thumb of the Security and Exchange Commissions. Clark also reported that he and the mayor want the city to be debt free by 2025. Mm -hmm. Bonds bring SEC oversight, added accounting requirements, and probably more work for Clark. However, the added protection well serves the bondholders, the city, and the citizens. Because of the existing sewer bonds, the SEC requires outside audit of the Eureka Springs Sewer and Water Department. Joyce Knowles and Eric Knowles used the outside audit performed last year to inform Clark, the mayor, and the city council that the amortization schedule attached to Ordinance 2265 
overstated the bond indebtedness by $1,815,000. While Clark and the mayor both thanked us for finding this error, they now want to eliminate the audit, the, the audit that allowed us to find it. The more fundamental question has to do with why this city would want to be debt free. This is an odd and counterproductive goal. Cities incur debt so that they can have nice things now and pay for them later. Like Eureka Springs has done with the sewer uh, treatment plant and the new police building. Debt is a problem only when one cannot make payments. The sewer bonds are no longer problems. They're at a very low interest rate, 3.2% and 4.2% and are now covered by the recent sewer increases. There's no need to pay them off early and the extra money to do so could be better spent fixing the water infrastructure. Debt free seems to be a goal only to escape audit and oversight. But the SEC is not in, interested in taking over this city or any city department and would do so only when there was gross financial or administrative nonfeasance. Debt is not the problem. In fact, debt could serve the city very well. A parking structure downtown could be explored to see if it would help citizens, visitors, and the economic lifeblood of this community. The city should investigate whether bonds for downtown parking debt could be guaranteed with CPA tax collections and paid off with parking fees. The city should stop acting out of fear of the SEC and start thinking how best to use the money for this city. Thank you. I have one other thing. Uh, I'm deaf. I have trouble hearing you at this meeting. I go and I look at the edited YouTube. There's a sign at the bottom that says it's been, the YouTube video has been edited for clarity. It has not. It, the, there are many mistakes in that editing and I implore you to go and look at that videotape and see how many errors are in it. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Bill. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, you missed it. We can share. We'll share. Yeah, we'll share. Hi, my name is Bill King, as you know, because I've been here before many times. Um, so Washington Street parking, you, on your agenda today, you have a discussion of it, and you, um, you have two ordinances that have been drafted for you to consider. Uh, one would be to remove three parking places and have access to Point Street from two directions. The other is meant to um, give access, to take away one parking space and um, give access from a single direction. Uh, that second one, the ordinance is written wrong, so it's coming, it's actually clearing you from the wrong direction. So if you decide to, with, to the, for the one-way option, you need to go back and do some measurements and rewrite that. Um, if you can see on my picture, I've kind of um, drawn what's going on there. Um, there are three parking places uh, across from Point Street there. Um, if you uh, had access from both directions, those would all go away. If you had access from just the from the south side, which is where emergency vehicles would be coming from, you would only lose one parking place. And I propose that actually that one parking place could be saved by moving it to over to the other side there at the trolley stop. You've got 40 feet uh, from Summit Street, from the corner of Summit Street to the first driveway. So you could have a 20 foot parking space there and still have 20 feet um, from, from the corner for, uh, to keep traffic from backing up. Um, I know I know Jimmy, our fire marshal, is very insistent that we have access from both sides, um, and I appreciate his um, his dedication. However, I think uh, you know he's going by the international fire code. Um, and I think if we're going to apply strictly the international fire code to this city, we're basically going to have to tear the city down and start over because it's just not doable. There are many places in town where you don't have access uh, from two directions. And um, I feel perfectly fine, and, I, and the people on Point Street would feel perfectly safe if emergency vehicles could get there from one direction. Um, as this discussion goes uh, during the meeting, um, I would appreciate it if someone, um, if 
I would like to speak some more if someone would uh, grant me some time to speak during the actual discussion on this topic. Thank you. I, I will be brief. Um, <laughs> my name is John Rankin, and I'm the husband of Bill King and co-owner of One Washington Street, uh, which is a fourplex, which houses um, uh, many people that um, are cleaning your toilets, serving you your margaritas, and et cetera, et cetera. It's, um, when Bill and I bought the building many, many years ago from Carolyn Green, um, uh, we decided to let Carolyn, it was a long story, but basically we let Carolyn Green die in her place along with her husband, Shalom. And that was part of the deal of buying the place. So they, they could not be evicted because of that. Um, when they both died, we had the choice of either doing whatever we wanted to do with the building. And we kept it um, affordable housing because we thought it was really important that this town has affordable housing for some of the people that live here. And I, th I think you can't punish people um, who are from a lower economic level because they want to live in town. I think it's only fair that they get the chance to be part of our community as well. And so <coughs> removing the parking is just going to be so detrimental to these people that are already struggling enough, you know. Um, I'm not totally altruistic, you know, um, it's going to hurt our, our investment in that building um, if we can't say to tenants we have parking in the, in the near future for them, off-street parking. So um, I just want to say please don't take the parking away. Um, you're opening a huge can of worms. The people on Vaughn Street have already contacted me with concerns about if, the, if that parking's removed, it's going to impact their street. There's no other place for these, you know, our tenants to park or for guests um, that are coming to park in, in, in this facility. Um, I think you're opening up a, a major can of worms um, if you do this. I mean, I think, you know, this town is obviously very, very tight. We all know it. We all live it. We all respect it. You know, there was no problem. There was no safety concerns when, you know, that 12-foot uh, um, green, whatchamacallit, was out there um, for eight months while they fixed the building across the street. There was no cries or outcries of, this is not safe anymore. This is not safe. I just want to, you know, um, plead with with council um, basically to please uh, listen to Bill's proposal. Um, the removal of one parking aspect would be um, I think fine for, for all of the above, but uh, to have all of it removed is um, not very cool. Thank you. Is that it? All right, that's the end of the public comments. Um, new business, get a motion to uh, read resolution in support of the Pension Review Board, rule oh, number four. So moved. Second. All right, any questions, comments? Yes, sir. All right, I make a motion we sign the resolution to number and read it for passage. Get a second, please? Second. Any discussions? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? So moved. Mr. McClellan? Yes. Ms. Kendrick? Yes. Go ahead. No. Ms. Green? Yes. Mr. Thomas? Yes. Ms. Snyder? Yes. Mr. Mitchell? Yes. 6 0. The resolution number will be 727. Adopting Pension Review Board Rule Number 4. Whereas the Local Fire Pension <coughs> Board has passed resolution adopting the Arkansas Fire and Police Pension Review Board Rule Number 4 and 
whereas this allows the pension plans with less than 50 participants to utilize the alternate cash flow projection valuation method of determining actuarial soundness and whereas the City Council of the City of Eureka Springs along with the local fire pension board certifies to the Arkansas Fire and Police Pension Review Board its understanding of board rule number four and the risks involved with a small group and, cer and certifies its understanding of the risk involved with an alternate cash flow method. Now therefore be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Eureka Springs, Arkansas that the Council hereby approves the utilization of board rule number four for the local fireman's pension fund. Thank you. All right, that brings us to a discussion for Washington Street parking. Motion to discuss. Second. Uh, <coughs> we have met uh, with the fire marshal and building inspector and, and both fire marshal and chiefs here. Yes, sir. Or I'm not sure who brought this to the table. They should be speaking first. Well, can I bring can I bring a little reference to what we've done? Okay. Go ahead, Mr. Thomas. You obviously your your name's on it, so go ahead. Excuse well, me. I would like to ask Mr. Their fire chief a question to start with. Uh, I, going back two years ago, when this same issue was before us, we had a, I had a neighbor come to me who was very concerned about her house based upon the Point Street discussion. You have your hand? Is he going to come so we can hear the response? I'm sorry, what? Who? Oh. Uh, so, I had a neighbor come to me very concerned about her house. I came to you to talk to you about this problem in, in town. Correct. And this is the, the response I wrote to my neighbor, and I just want to read it to you. I spoke to our fire chief today about equipment access to her street. According to him, the fire department has two, not one, as was mentioned at a recent council meeting, pumper trucks, both of which would be able to turn onto her small street. In addition, if they were not able to directly access your house, or if they needed more water than the two trucks could provide, firefighters train regularly on hooking up hoses to fire hydrants and then carrying, laying them down the hose on the run to the actual fire site nearby. And her response was, thank you for inquiring about that. This makes me feel a lot better. So I guess my question, what I don't understand is, what is the difference between the Point Street intersection and all the other little intersections in town? Um, you know, every intersection and every street in town is different. This this town is unlike any other town across our country. Um, fire fire departments have issues accessing streets all over the country. Um, I think any time that uh, an opportunity is provided for us to do what's in the best interest of public safety, um, that's going to be uh, our fire marshal's uh, determination. We want to do what's in the best interest of public safety. Um, if, if there's an area, and there are areas that we can't get some of our bigger fire trucks down certain streets, there will be quite a bit of uh, carrying of hose like uh, Mr. McClung and I have discussed and and uh, uh, Ms. Schneider and I have discussed in the past. We, we've uh, relocated some of our smaller apparatus closer to town just for that reason. Um, but The intersection there is no different than any other intersection throughout the community. If there's an area that we're not going to be able to access, we're going to be doing uh, uh, qu quite a bit of manpower. It, it's it's uh, quite labor intensive. So, 
if we can't get a truck down that road, we're going to be carrying a lot of hose and uh, depending on the construction of, 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 of whatever building is being built and the amount of water that's going to be required, the fire flow, in order to put out the fire load, um, you know, it, it, it just depends on the structure and the involvement by the time we get there. So thank you. Ms. Schneider? So in your professional opinion, does anything, if you have your druthers, does anything need to be done at this intersection? That's question one. Um, I know at that particular intersection, because we, we've, on two different occasions, taking, uh, taken fire apparatus, two different fire apparatus to that intersection, and um, have had to, had difficulty turning down that that particular road. Uh, we've had to make several point turns and with one apparatus we're unable to, and Jimmy might be able to answer that one, with 51 we're unable to make access coming from one direction, is that correct? Are you familiar with that? How was the question again, Chief? Uh, coming, we've taken two different apparatus to that intersection. Yeah. I know we took... Uh, Jim, you need to come up. And we've taken the, the Sullivan, which is a smaller apparatus, short wheelbase, and uh, coming from, let's say, the Crescent Hotel direction, and turning into Point Street, we had to make a three or a four-point turn, uh, backing up, pulling forward, backing up, pulling forward, backing up, pulling forward, and then finally making it down. Um, and then coming from the hospital direction that way, we actually had to make a, a two or a three point turn. But engine 54, 1154, our primary engine that is housed at station one up by McDonald's, 51. which is 51, correct. 54 used to be, we've changed numbers a few times and changed locations a few times, but um, that particular apparatus uh, had quite a challenge making that that particular turn from either direction. From either direction, correct. Let's see. Oh. So does that answer your question? That's part of question one. Okay. So question two is because I know we went through this several years ago. Yes. Question two is, do you have a small enough engine that can make the turn fairly easily? from the proper direction? Not one that puts out the amount of fire flow that would be required for a fully involved structure. Fire. Would it be enough to contain the fire while you were walking hose down there? It just it just depends on, on how on how big the, <laughs> how involved the fire is. You know, okay. It, it's all based on speculation and how big the fire is. Okay, so. then the question three and hopefully the last one for now is when you guys get these calls, I assume from our talks before mm -hmm. that you know exactly where it is and the fact that you need a smaller one versus larger or whatever. Correct. For, no matter where a call comes from, right? So you wouldn't just blindly be going out to an address and go, oops, we needed a different truck. <laughs> Being that we have four full-time paid staff, um, they, they also staff the ambulances. Um, we may rely on volunteers to acquire a particular vehicle or apparatus, depending on what structure we're responding to and but knowing, you would knowing know the location. But we may not have that vehicle parked at Station 1. Okay, but you would have the knowledge of what was required. Generally. From an address call. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Mitchell? Yes, sir. I want to go back to a couple things, and my question will be for you, Chief, and also you, Fire Marshal, at the same time, so even one of you can answer as you see fit. Fire Marshal Kelly, back on July 26th of 16, 429, you wrote a letter to Bill King at that time <coughs> specifically saying you were sorry for any confusion created. I realize this is not what you want to hear but this is what I find is needed to properly access Point Street. 
please pay a note that this letter was written to Bill King back on 726 of 16. It included a list of requirements to make Point Street achieve a level of fire uh, code compliance based on the fact that it had the opportunity to be compliant to those fire codes with a few suggestions. One was the dead end with the turnaround. Is that turnaround available now? There is a turnaround. Is I, it? I haven't been there yet to see if it is. If Jimmy, what we need. microphone. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> that turnaround is there where you guys have been constructing, correct? I have not been there, but Chief Samick had told me that it was. It's not uh, marked. I don't know. Don't know the okay. turn around. So then, if that's the case, the ambulance that had went down there to one of Bill King's rental places the other day had to back out and get citizens to help it back out because it didn't use the turnaround. Do they just not know about that turnaround? Uh, if it's not marked, that's a possibility, and depending on whether we're utilizing part time personnel. So we um, have this code here from what, 16, that's still not in effect, basically. Well, it. it Yes. Buildings and facilities. Road should extend 150 feet. Grading, but one of the most down here was fire apparatus cell. Access roads shall not be obstructed in any manner, including the parking of vehicles. For this section, we have already addressed with council and request the intersection at Point in Washington Street be marked red curb for 60 feet to the south and north from the center of Point Street on the west side of Washington Street to allow room to make an approach into Point Street. Are you agreeing with that statement or not? Uh, that was Jimmy's uh, interpretation at that time whenever he evaluated uh, what code was available pertaining to uh, reviewing the construction plan. Um, and so and so your, question, your answer to that is yes or no, you agree with it? I would have to agree with Jimmy's uh, assessment at that time. Okay. I got a, an email here from you on April the 27th of 2018 in which you said I agree with him that we have to be able to make the turn onto Point Street. You I still stand by that? Uh, if it can be made accessible for us to get an apparatus and not drag a thousand feet of five inch hose down mm -hmm. Point Street and then have to, I mean, we don't mind doing, you know, physical labor. Okay. That's part of this job, but sure getting apparatus as close as possible to a burning structure uh, means that we can get a fire put out quicker. So which one of these proposals do you support? Uh, taking one or two parking places away or taking all three? Um, After having a discussion with uh, Fire Chief Kelly and the building official and uh, several others dependent, you know, pertaining to this, mm -hmm. uh, there are there are you know it's a it's a an interesting question because it, it you want specifically my opinion. I, I um, want your, your professional opinion as the fire chief of the department, what you would recommend to us. I would like to be able to turn an apparatus down that vehicle, and down that street, if at all possible. From uh, So which one of these ordinances then do you support? Bill has I haven't seen either ordinance, so okay. I, I, I'd have Taking to read Taking one or two ordinance. sparking spaces so that if you're coming from... Uh, up um, Summit Street and coming up that way, there was a discussion about taking either one or two places to make the swing on and eliminating coming from the Crescent Hotel down because you say most of the time fire trucks come from the Summit Street up. So I think that's kind of what Bill's proposal is in a way. It may be off from it, but that's kind of yeah. what his since, is. Since our discussion the last time, we've since sold one fire station. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, the one on White Street. Yeah. Yes. So the probability of responding from White Street that direction, mm -hmm. it, it, it's possible, but it's not very probable. But if we happen to be at the Crescent Hotel on an alarm, a fire alarm, okay. and a crew comes in, you know, or there's another fire alarm, like I said, there's possibilities and then there's probabilities. Um, 
So fire chief. It makes it difficult to access that street from either direction the way it is now. Is that an acceptable alternative? Well, it's certainly up to the chief or the council to decide that. You got to talk in here. Right. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's up to the chief and the council because it's a public street. Um, so it's certainly their call. I have to bring it yeah, to absolutely. the attention because it was being evaluated for a building that uh, Mr. King asked me to evaluate the street before he could build the building. What would be needed would it be was that street a um, proper egress or something along that nature. So I went over. That's how it got started. Um, and I have to evaluate it. Uh, according to uh, several different chapters of the code on uh, fire apparatus access to start with before I even get into the type of building or whatever mm -hmm. uh, and things like that. So that's how I had to put down what I felt was needed uh, at that tight intersection to get in there. Uh, but it, it does create a big problem and certainly would not try to knock people out of their uh, livelihood or whatever they could need for parking. But I have to put it down that way as to, uh, the best interest to me would be have access from either direction. It makes uh, good sense what the chief is saying, what's being asked about, can we just get there from one street, uh, one direction mainly? Uh, it's a good question, and it can. It has to be, somebody has to make that decision. And I think Chief Samick has had that position, or the council, to uh, decide what we need to do. But I think you all need to know, and you all need to be a part of that discussion and figure it out so that if something happens later, I'm not liable. And Chief Samick may or may not want to tell you exactly that's that is his call as my chief uh, and chief of our uh, fire department so uh, coming I don't disagree with coming that from the Crescent Hotel mm -hmm. if we if this is all hypothetical every bit of this is hypothetical if we were to come from the Crescent Hotel on an apparatus to go down Point Street mm -hmm. the option would be to pass Point Street turn up toward Ojo and Summit, back into Vaughn, and then access it again. It would be a delay of few minutes. 30 seconds, okay. another Another question seconds. of the fire, the chief, fire marshal. When a person is doing new construction, you have some requirements that you're necessarily supposed to do before they get building permits? Is that correct? Yes. And is one of those that, that there is you assess the fire situation and the access to it? Was yeah. that done for the new construction at the end of Point Street? Yes, that's that's how it come about. So it so you did do the assessment and everything that allowed the building inspector to give the permits. What you're telling me? Yes. Okay. Good. Okay. Mr. Kendrick. Um, there was a dumpster along this street for months, if not more than a year. Um, I assume that that was there by virtue of a permit, am I correct, or did they just drop it there? That's a question I couldn't answer. Uh, and the fire department has no say in whether the street is blocked as I a result of... I think we're informed when streets are completely blocked. But, yeah, I think he's got the answer. We're informed when a street is completely blocked. Um, well, it wasn't were we informed blocked. that a dumpster would be there for whatever period of time it was there? Uh, I don't know. I'd have to go back through our daily logs during that period of time and and check uh, but as far as my knowledge right now of whether we were informed that that dumpster was going to be placed there or from this point in time to this point in time and I don't know would that dumpster yeah. have obstructed your ability to make those turns I don't remember exactly where the dumpster was from I'm just wondering why Correct. nobody was upset about all this when that dumpster was there, and now all of a sudden we are. Christy, I can answer that okay, question. Please. They they were, and the the, the the homeowners that were put having the dumpsters put there actually called the fire department, and the fire department said to move it up as close to that that distant driveway as possible to make the point the swing off of uh, off of uh, Washington Street coming in from 
from Summit, so they actually had the uh, the dumpsters moved, and, and they were then they were continued thereafter on the on the part of the fire department. And that would be in our daily log that I, we keep. But okay. Like I said, I don't have that with me right now. I have a question of the city attorney. Um, do we require permits for uh, dumpsters on city streets? I would have to look, but I don't believe so. That would be a question you would be better off to cite to your building official. Okay. He would be in full charge of that type of action if we do have a requirement. Ms. Schneider. Okay, both through me and Nikki. Have you guys, okay, you said you didn't have a chance, hadn't had a chance to read these. Jimmy, have you seen them? Okay. I would like to suggest we don't take any action today until the marshal and the chief have sat down, looked at this, and had a discussion with Bill in regards to his map and see if something equitable and workable could be worked out that would make the people safe but also not destroy parking. That would, you, would that work with you guys? Is well, that, is that a well, not yet. Bill? Sorry. Guys? Um, I'll we've already we have had discussions. We've had several discussions, and I'd, I'd be happy to well, sit yeah, down and you haven't read those. Read those and <coughs> probably okay. take me a couple minutes to. Well, then I make a motion that we put this off till the next meeting, so that they can read these, go over them, three can get together, see what's going on, or the two as need be, and come up with a final workable decision. Second that. All right, you've got a motion to defer this to our next meeting? Um, I would like to amend that motion so that Bill has an opportunity to present to the, the fire department a third. I um, included him. I said his May map. I finish? Just a minute. Go no, ahead. because you, I included him. Reset your amendment. Yeah. I would like to make an amendment that Bill has an opportunity to write up a third ordinance that the fire department can. It's right here. No. That is. That's <coughs> excuse okay. me. We got an amendment I that. I uh, to <coughs> interruption. Mr. King write a third ordinance and submit along with the council for these two ordinances. Question on that amendment? Do I have a second? A second. Okay. Why? Discussion, okay, dis discussion. Just a minute. Okay. discussion on the amendment. I already included him. I included no, his map. I included them working together. What is the point? She wants him to write an ordinance. Write an ordinance. You're going to ask a non-legal right, person to not. write an ordinance. Okay, that makes sense. Yes, sir. Mr. David. God, I'm almost agreeing with Mickey. This is scary. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, it does happen. I... <laughs> No, on second thought, I'm not going to say anything. All right, any further discussion on the amendment? If I may have an opportunity to speak uninterrupted, I would like to elaborate. I believe Bill could describe in writing a better, um, or in his mind at least, a better um, location than was presented in those two ordinances. Um, a map is not the same as writing it up. I want Bill to have the opportunity to write up the a description of what he suggests. No, I do want to talk, Mayor. Okay. Yes, sir. Mr. Mitchell. We have a fire chief. We have a fire marshal. And we had a building inspector. And I have an email here from the building inspector and very clearly heard from the building inspector that he agreed with the fire marshal. Very clearly. These are the experts. These are the ones that defend this city from fire. These are the ones that uphold the codes. These people sitting at this table here do not uphold the fire codes, but we're supposed to uphold them and their decisions. I don't hold myself out as an expert on fire. I didn't volunteer as a fire department when I put out fires, so I don't have a clue. I can tell them about the ambulance a lot, but I'm not going to go in and tell them how to run the ambulance either with my medical background. I'm not going to do it. They're the experts. And for us to sit here and ask a citizen to write an ordinance that's based on the need of the person for parking over the fire chief and the fire marshal 
is obscene. Mr. Purely McClung? obscene. I'm sorry. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mr. McClung. First of all, and, and, and I don't know if I should even be talking about this until you've made a decision on this on this uh, on this uh, amendment uh, and and the motion that Vicki made. I'd, I'd like to get back to the topic at hand, but I don't know if I should be discussing. If it's we're talking about the amendment, I, I have nothing to say about that. Okay, we, we'll be back to the other one in a minute. Mr. Thomas, did you have something on the amendment? No. Ms. Snyder. The whole point of my motion was to include Bill. Just because he has a quick map doesn't mean he doesn't know what he's talking about, nor does it mean that the two experts don't know what he's talking about. That was the whole point of including the property owner along with the two experts. We do not need to have any other ordinances or anything else. These two will be sufficient or whatever they end up with, taking those two, combining them into a final thing. All right, no further discussion on the amendment. I've uh, got the vote on the amendment that would uh, have Mr. King write uh, a third ordinance to go along with uh, our other ordinances. Uh, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, signify by saying no. 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 Motion fails. Motion fails. <coughs> all right brings us back to the original motion uh, to defer this to our next week. Uh, May we discuss first? Certainly. Thank you. Okay. Um, I think before we do that, <coughs> I, I, you know, in a perfect world, all streets would be 60 feet wide, but they're not. And, uh, you know, these streets have been narrow in this town since the inception of the town. Granted, you know, vehicles were smaller, wagons, cars, and trucks, and, and all that. But we have what we have. And so, you know, precedent is a big thing in this town. And, and, and if it was a 60-foot street, Mr. Kelly and Mr. Samick would be correct. Absolutely. You know, there, there's, you know, there shouldn't be anything to obstruct them. But it's but it's not, you know. It's it's it is the street exists as it exists, and so you have to take all that history into consideration. And and if you set a precedent by taking away parking spots that have been there and used historical, historically since, you know, a, a, a term uh, an attorney used to use in town was since the beginning of time. Well, it's not the beginning of time, of course, but it's the inception of this town then when you do it in one place, then you are going to open yourself to every place else. And it's this real slippery slope, and, and I recommend not going there. The, the fire department, granted, it would be great if they could get a larger apparatus down there. But, you know, they just have to deal with what they have to deal with. That's all. All right, actually, we've got the motion to defer this for two weeks. It's a motion. So I'll put in with the wait on that. All right. Because I'll save more discussion. All those in favor of deferring this for to our next council meeting, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? No. No. Okay. So thank you, Mr. King. We'll get together and, and along with the fire marshal and building inspector and fire chief and discuss this further. I'll let them say the order. Thank ordinance. you, boys. Here's. Uh, mm -hmm. There's an ordinance you can get there. Do you have a copy? You have a copy of the ordinance? You got a copy of the ordinance? Uh, yeah. Uh, all right, that brings us to our next item on the agenda, uh, 2017 budget cleanup resolution. Motion to discuss. So moved. Second. Second. All right. Mr. Clark? Yes, sir. All right, we've got a resolution for 
amending our cleanup for 2017. This is commonly called the cleanup resolution. <clears throat> it's for the 2017 year end budget, and it's just simply adjusting the budget to the actual numbers as they came in. And that's something that is, we've done every year. It puts us uh, uh, where we are in compliance. Thomas? Two years ago, this council passed a, a, a motion regarding a specific format they wanted the cleanup resolution to be in. We've had two cleanup resolutions and two mid-year budget resolutions since then. For all four of them, we've had to go back and say this is not in the proper format. You know, bring it back to us when it is. So I would move to table this until it's in the format adopted by the city council. I hear a second. I'm confused. What format? I'll second it for sake of discussion. Okay. Discussion? Well, I can answer her. Yeah. What form? Question. What format is supposed to be? Format regarding uh, that there would be the original budget figures, the final budget figures, the, the differences in each category, and totals oh. showing the differences oh. between the original budgets and and uh, the final budget. Okay, now I remember what you're talking about. Okay. Any further discussion? Is this possible to do, Lonnie? It is. Okay. Uh, we, uh, it, it, it'll be very simple to do. So okay. just okay. All right, motion to defer this. We can we do it. This is, okay. uh, this is uh, a format that has been used for years but we can we can comply with that without a problem all right motion to defer all those in favor sing by saying aye aye, aye. 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 any opposed okay so moved thank you lonnie uh, next item is uh, discussion remodeling the auditorium. Mr. Thomas. Yeah. Uh, just want to point out that at the March 12th meeting of City Council, we had kind of consistence that we wanted to get into the gym for City Council meetings. Uh, there was a motion to uh, have a cost estimate in phases at least by the middle of April. We're almost to the first of June now and there's nothing been done so I would like to set up a schedule for getting estimates and work started and moving down the stairs and uh, I'd like to have mayor's input on what a reasonable timeline would be hmm. um, it took me until about two weeks ago to be able to get the people from the elevator company over here to give us estimates on elevators and then actually it was about three weeks ago and then I had to send them back because I'm not sure we could get the elevators there's two different elevators that uh, we can use we can use a elevator lift uh, without a problem unfortunately the elevator lift will only carry approximately a total of 1200 pounds um, a lift is basically a wire cage in through there to get an elevator uh, that would carry up to 2,500 pounds, uh, which is more feasible down through there, which is a problem I had with making sure we had the headroom, and I'm still not sure we have, uh, we need 14 inches uh, for a pit underneath that. So I still got to have the floor cut uh, to see if we got 14 inches underneath the floor. Uh, the difference between the two, uh, is about 65,000 just for the elevator. That's for the main elevator versus 35,000 for the lift. If we do the elevator, uh, we're going to have to have a walkway over there uh, plus the bathrooms. Uh, we're probably looking at anywhere from a minimum of roughly 125,000 to uh, counting the uh, handicapped bathroom uh, to maybe $150,000. If we do that, then we're going to have to go ahead and hire an architect for it. Uh, 
if we do that, uh, and that's what the council wants to do, then we're going to have to do that. And we're looking at probably six months before we're able to get a set of documents uh, for to be able to put out for bids, uh, if that's what the council wants to do. I think the council needs to make a decision if we're willing to go. Either way, we're probably looking at, we're probably still looking at $100,000 to $150,000, $175,000 for elevator and okay. bathroom remodeling. Okay. Mr. Mitchell? That, that uh, cost range is, is very helpful in making, uh, going ahead with the decision. <coughs> so we have North Street sitting there. And the city's not a very good landlord when it comes to collecting rent, especially on North Street, it seems. Not that, you know, there was a lot of extenuating circumstances, and I certainly understand them, and I certainly don't want to repeat them. But North Street has some value, and I would assume North Street, if we put it up for bidding, would probably bring in a good 100000 at least for that building with the property and the way it's sitting. Now, who would want to buy it? There's probably a fair number of people would want to buy it, anywhere from Allegiance to the hospital or or somebody for a home, even to flip it at that right price range. So considering that that money could go into expanding the use of this auditorium, making it more functional, functional for the city and the citizens, and bring this place back up to its glory, fully occupied, fully used, I think deserves the ability to go forward. And yes, we should meet all ADA compliance uh, standards and have that bathroom. I'm not, I'm, I'm not too sure that, I understand the 2,500 and the 1,500, 1,200 pound lifts, but, uh, so you can't bring a ton of merchandise down the elevator at one time. You can bring it down twice and keep it under 1,200 pounds. And that even saves more money. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go out on a limb and say that we ought to go ahead and make the decision to formally to move to the auditorium and to proceed. I second that. If that's a motion. If I'll make that a motion. <laughs> okay. Mr. McClellan. Um, I'm not sure if this would need to be an amendment to that, but I like the idea of of the basement being utilized. Mm -hmm. um, I really do, and I and I agree with the concept of the the lower weight unit. Would yeah, you make two trips instead of one. Mm -hmm. That's, I I have no problem with that. I'm good with that too, and I like the idea of eliminating. North Street and use those funds dedicate that to the project. I think that's I think that's great. So do do we need a you think it'd be wise to have a motion added to that to uh, or separately to uh, to offer that North Street for sale and can it be publicly marketed? Yeah, that's a separate issue. That's a separate issue. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I just wanted to say um, the people that have talked to me are so excited about us doing this. And I think what David suggested and Mr. McClung suggested is I think we should make the motion to put the North Street up for sale and proceed. I think saving this building is just a really fabulous thing. It's a place where the community can do things. We can also attract state conventions, which we've had to <coughs> rent places when we've had HDC conventions. We could also now have like the governor's convention, the tourism convention, and we would have a place. I, I just think it's a fabulous idea. All right. Mr. Thomas? Uh, could you clarify David's motion for me, but then not? To commit to moving to the auditorium. Okay, then I'd like to amend that to say that we would hire an architect to pursue developing the plans. I don't think we have. I 
I want to ask a question about that. I guess I'm going to have to second it to ask the question. <laughs> you can ask a question. I think yeah. if you don't understand the, the, the yeah. I'm seconding his, his amendment so that I can have discussion. I would think with the amount of money that we're potentially, the, the rough estimate we just got from the mayor, which requires an architect, I, I didn't know why we needed a, an amendment to the motion to hire one, especially since we're talking to the mayor slash architect in the first place. Oh, he's not allowed. Well, he's not allowed to draw the plans. <laughs> I've got that one, for sure. But I don't... I, it, I, I guess that was my only concern, Bob. I just didn't okay. understand why we needed an architect when we're going to have to get one anyway. So. Well, okay. my, my concern is that you can make a motion to move downstairs to the auditorium, and that motion can sit there for the next 10 years with a motion to move. Well, hiring an architect isn't going to make it move any quicker, so we probably should have put a time frame on it. Well, it's still won't six, work. Six months to get the plan. You're, you're, yeah, trying, to your tell, you're trying to tell them, like, Tell a lawyer how fast you, something will go through well. the court. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, then I, I would say to hire an architect within the next two months. Christy. Mr. Mayor, do you, do you need um, counsel to give you authority to hire an architect? No. Oh, okay. Mr. McClung? Do you have to have an architect? Can't you get to it with just an anything engineer? over a hundred thousand dollars has to have an architect. Can't just be an engineer. Uh, mm. There'd probably be a combination, but no, there's going to be an architect involved because you've got plumbing and uh, some interior work. I mean, there's going to be other engineers involved, and the architects are ones going to be coordinating that. An engineer is not going to be able to draw up the ADA bathrooms. Mm. So that'd be an architect that would need to do that. Yes, sir. For getting the architect doing anything, how, what's a reasonable timeline for hiring an architect? Well, I can put I can put out proposals and, and get some requests in. I mean, we can get that done relatively quick. Okay. Yes, sir, Mr. McClung. I, I was also thinking that I mean that you know I I know how this kind of thing goes. And, and 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 the cost goes up exponentially each day that's delayed. You know, once 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 it's outlined and and, and decisions are like just like just like the the public works building, it went from seventy five thousand to two hundred. You know, just as an example. You know, it just so um, I think we better set up some kind of a ceiling or something and and try and give us some parameters. Is what I'm thinking. Um, so, I mean, I want to. I want to. I, I would like to proceed with this, but but I'm just not exactly sure the right direction. Well, you would get. I mean, I've given you some rough costs just for uh, the equipment and possible uh, construction. Uh, you know, if. Uh, I think once we get the parameters from from a design standpoint, uh, we'll have some more figure cost figures at that point in time that will be presented to the council. I mean, it won't be just going out for bids and saying here. Uh, the difference between the seventy thousand dollar maintenance building and the two hundred thousand was the fact that the original building was a, a poultry processing metal building. Versus right, right. We're not, we're not, so we're not going to. We're not going to try and recreate the Taj Mahal either. I mean, that's, no. you know, that's... Yeah, we've, we've got a basic building down there, or a structure. Yes, sir. I'm going to go out on a limb here and ask a question. When I, I think it was at the beginning of your term, so it would have been my second term on council, and you were, you as mayor, or became mayor, and you were working on the architectural drawings for the pavilion out at uh, Lake Leatherwood, I believe. And council Correct. made... Uh, uh, an exception to allow you to to be the architect. So I'm going to go ahead and ask a question, you know, not make it a motion. I'm going to ask a question. If this council made an exception and acknowledged uh, you uh, as being uh, and having the ability to be the architect of this project, is is that legal? 
the council can do that. I'm not sure that I would accept that. I think I'd, I want to. I've talked to another architect about downstairs, and I've had him look at it with me to make sure we're. So you're ahead uh, of the game already. We're looking at, you know, uh, making sure that you know things are going on. So, so if yeah. based on that, can you speed up that time frame? I can find out, and, and I don't know whether I can speed it up because, you know, it's like anything else. Uh, People are busy. This construction is going up, and I don't know what uh, everybody's time schedule is, but I can certainly get in contact with. Okay. Uh, it's about hiring an architect to uh, proceed with this and coming back, and letting the council know where we are. Okay. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, just I want to ask something of of the fire chief or or uh, uh, fire marshal Kelly, and that is, what is the capacity downstairs that is it, as, as it exists right now? Do you have a you recall? No, no, off the top of my head. Okay. I mean, I, I mean, I know it's going to be for meetings, but they have to be involved in this to some degree, I think. Occupancy, yes. Yeah. So, um, I don't have that number in front of me. We can look that up to find out. Probably somewhere around 100, 150, I think. But uh, just another note on that is the uh, uh, elevator would have to connect up to the alarm system as well when it's put in. That would be another requirement to not oversight too. So keep that in mind. That's going to be a little cost and additional stuff that I think we would be capable of. But I don't know what that uh, panel, it's pretty old too, if it's capable of that. So keep that in mind. If you add an elevator, that's actually adding a third entrance exit. Yeah. No. no. Uh, elevators not allowed no. to be used as a life safety device or uh, access exit. Okay. Strictly ADA. Yep. yep. And I believe probably it's not, I think we have enough egress with openings. It's, it's just the square footage that determines. Yeah, you know, you're already okay on your occupancy uh, right now. I think you have plenty for, depends on how you set it up, but I think yeah. you're okay on that. Okay. Uh, we had a motion, or do we have a uh, Where are we? Well, I have a question because uh, Mr. Thomas amended his amendment by adding within the next two months, and I did not hear a second to that. No, his so amendment went down in flames. <laughs> so, does that leave us with Mr. Thomas' original motion to amend to say hiring our architect to develop plans? without the time frame of within the next two months? Does it take us back to that? I think that was Bare an Bones amendment, amendment to Mr. Mitchell. And wait a second. minute. I'm backing up uh, into the order of things. Okay. Your second amendment to, well, your amendment to your amendment mm -hmm. was to say within the next two months. Correct. Okay. And so there was not a second on that. Right. By virtue of that fact, that we that back time. up into your original amendment, correct? To say to hire an, an, arch an architect to develop plans and that did get a second so, oh now we're voting on that amendment if i'm understanding correctly okay that's correct thank you okay so we're voting on the amendment to hire an architect everybody understand mm -hmm. all right all those in favor sing by saying aye. 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 aye aye any opposed all right so now we're back to the original motion, which is to move to the auditorium. Okay. All those in favor, sing five by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Leon. Yes. While we're on this topic, I'd like to make a, um, a motion at this point in time that we start the process for um, putting North Street up for sale. Second. Point of order. That's in addition to the agenda, which can be done, but it has to be added to the agenda. Well, it's too late now to add it <laughs> to the agenda. No, it's not. It can be done. Oh, okay. Yeah. I make a motion that we add the, the sale of North Street to the agenda as a topic. Second. Okay. Any further discussion on amending the agenda to adding North Street? Hearing none, all those in favor, sing five, sing aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Uh, now. Okay.
Okay, so that takes us to uh, item five, uh, which has been deferred to June eleventh meeting. So wait a second. No, so are we going to vote on? Are, are we going to vote on selling it? No. Are we going to move? That's, that's agenda. Agenda. Oh, it's okay. So you're going to move the north to the end of the agenda? Is that Correct. Okay. Oh, oh. sorry. Oh. To the end of new business, which would make it number eight. Okay. okay. Well, that brings us uh, the next next item is uh, Rock Street resolution. I'll make a motion to assign a number to the resolution for and read it and read it. Read it for approval. Read it for approval. Really? Okay. Did I hear a second? Second. Discussion. Mr. Thomas. Um, the property owner affected has been dealing with this for several years now and has requested that we put a timeline on there for the removal from the master plan, even if it's just redacted and taken out. Uh, Christian? Uh, isn't this, as it is written, um, mean that it would be effective immediately? Yes, ma'am. I believe so. Isn't that right, Mr. Waver? Actually, it's written so it's effective two years ago. No, that's right. It's, it says it's been recognized as having been okay. removed. Correct. Council has just never done it. Mr. McClellan? Yeah, I'll refresh my memory what this is, please. It's in the resolution. Rock uh, yeah, no, where it is. Rock Street down at uh, Magnetic uh, McKinley Williams. Williams' old house. Yeah, is this Rachel the one that goes right in front of uh, Rachel Briggs' house? Is this what uh, we needed to her, or what, what did we do? We close that street. Right. And, and get into the property on it. Right. And it was on the master trail masters master trail list. Uh, but it was uh, decided to be taken off, but the council has never taken it off formally. And so this formally takes it off the trail, the master list that's on the parks trails. Okay. And we don't, we don't own it anymore anyway. Yeah. So we no. didn't own it to begin with. Uh, Mr. Thomas? Uh, could I ask Justin a question? Passing this resolution tonight, how long does it take you to get this off of your map? It'll be a Photoshop process. The original data that was created, that map is, we don't know where it is, but we could just scan that and Photoshop it and take it out. Mr. Mayor, we've got a horrible buzz on our sound system right now. Oh, is someone put Do you have it on yours? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he's got it, too. Somebody's phone ringing or buzzing? Mine's way over here. Where's this one? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Um, okay, I'm confused. When we worked on this several years ago, the city vacated that one section that was basically the driveway for the Brooks house. At that point, the trails plan was at the far end of the land property, and it went and dealt with marble flats. There was, it was not going to be touching her private property, so I don't understand what this is. Terry, do you remember that discussion on the trail versus the street? They, they, don't, they don't have an easement across Marble Flats. But no, but I mean, but it was at that end of the property. The, the, the Parks, trail. Parks has no easement across Marble Flats. Right. There's no there's no access to Marble Flats uh, by City Street from that end. No. Okay, but that's what I'm saying. That was the section. It was close to the Marble Flats. It was at that end of the property. So I don't understand what this is. Do you remember? I do. Yeah, go ahead. I think right. that was a different street. It finally became clear that what was on the trails map was indeed the Briggs's property. 
Oh, Therefore, okay. the ordinance vacating that section of land is the section of Rock Street that runs in front of the Bricks House, and that is still on the trails map. It's okay, on so the proposed the trail front section. And went on up. It's on the map. It okay. goes with the resolution saying that the council right. supports right. the trails map as a working document. Okay. So and I can show you the documentation if you'd yeah. like. No, it's just I, couldn't, I was trying to figure out where it was because I know that one part in front of the house went up like through the woods. And that's where they were talking about coming down, that and the far end. So, okay. Mr. Thomas? I just, I missed Justin's answer when I asked him how, that was when this buzz came on. Uh, uh, how long was it going to take you to change the map? The, the process itself is a matter of scanning, photoshopping out that section because right. we don't have the original data and putting it on. This is just procedural. This is a council approved master plan and it's not appropriate for us to make edits right. without a resolution from that's really all we're asking for. That section, again, it's proposed. It's two, literally two inches from the word proposed trails. It's not on a trail map. It mm -hmm. hasn't been on a trail map. And just to discuss, there's been some comments about us not listening to some things. We've not been approached about this for some time, and we've recommended to the person complaining to come make that request. Okay. Um, perfectly fine. Again, proposed trails, not a trail map, not anything on there, so that's fine. Yes, we want to run a trail through there someday. That's why it's proposed, because we don't have the thing. We're perfectly fine with taking Rock Street off the map and not showing that as a trail. And it's so. described on four or five different pages as being a part of your trails? I find it in one page on our master trail plan. Okay. One page, two inches from the word proposed trails. Do you know of additional pages? I, I, it, I have them at home, yes. Can what you I give that suggestion? Uh, yeah, show me, Robbie. I, I'm not saying it doesn't exist. I, it, on our current master trail plan that yeah. keeps being referenced in this issue, it's in one place. Yeah. And again, we understand that's vacated. It's not going. It's been not an option since I arrived here. So it's not something we've been like, yeah, we're going to do that. It just hasn't been taken off because it's a procedural issue by this body. So, yeah. I'll send them to you. Oh, great. Good. Make sure they're not being put out anywhere, certainly. I mean, again, we, we looked. Yeah. When we were told that, we did look forward. This is the only place that I've found, found that Ms. section. Um, the city council vacated this property in 2014. Mm -hmm. Why was it not taken off the maps then? I don't, can't answer that question. I, don't, I wasn't here until 2016. But, okay, you were here in 2016. Well, I answered that question happened. just a moment ago. This is a council, city council approved I, master plan I that takes a reference. I disagree. I think it was, it, all action was appropriately taken hmm. Four years ago, and I do not understand why it remains on the map. Well, I can't speak to four years ago, but I can say again that the procedure for a council approved master plan is the council to make a resolution to make that edit. It's not appropriate for me to make that edit. We. I, that's, we're trying, right now we're dealing with this I, resolution. I so, I, I mean, we're, we're fine with taking it off. We, uh, we I, apologize I know, for any confusion it may have that caused. This is something that we would do. No, and I agree doing yeah. it, but I feel like this is unnecessary. This sh should have been done four years well, ago. Whether it and should or it shouldn't, it, we're doing it. It's taking care of it. I'm hoping. Any further questions? All right. We got a motion and <clears throat> to read this resolution, find a number and read it for passage. Do we need a second? Is we have. Oh, Ms. we have that. Um, oh, yes. Ms. Schneider. Yes. Ms. Kendrick. Yes. Ms. McClung. Yes. Mr. Mitchell. Yes. Mr. Thomas. Yes. Six zero. Okay. The resolution number will be seven two seven uh, eight. A resolution clarifying that Rock Street is no longer a part of the master plan for trails. Whereas the City Council of Eureka Springs, Arkansas, having been informed that an issue has arisen as to the status of Rock Street as part of the master plan for trails, and whereas the City of Eureka Springs recognized the master plan for trails by resolution 642 on July 14, 2014, and vacated an unnamed area of Rock Street in Ordinance 2215 passed on July 28, 2014. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Eureka Springs, Arkansas, that Rock Street is recognized as having been removed from the master plan for trails by Ordinance 2215. Thank you. Thank you. All right, our next item under new business is uh, 
discussion of uh, B&B CUP moratorium. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Uh, so, um, I... No. Ms. Kendricks, I think you had a... Uh, motion to discuss. Second. Um, I received a, an oh. email from Ann Sally, um, who is the chair of the Planning Commission, uh, indicating that it has come to her attention that there may be applicants coming before the Planning Commission for a B&B &B cup in the guise of tourist lodging. And uh, she is respectfully requesting that the City Council pass a six-month moratorium on um, on B and B cups. I back in um, January 9th, 2017, this City Council passed Resolution 700, which was a moratorium on all new cups in R1 and R2 um, until June 30th, 2017. Um, I gather that the issues um, at that time. Um, I was very concerned about um, the effect of increased B&B &B, uh, B&Bs on um, the availability of affordable housing. I don't think that any of these um, issues have yet has yet been addressed. So I would like to move that we um, that City Council place a moratorium on all new B&B &B cups in R1 and R2. Um, for until six, six, six months from the date of this uh, resolution. I'll second that, and then. All right. Yes, Ms. Green. Um, when the, when she gave the timeline and the last moratorium, the planning commission worked really hard to come up with code definitions and changes to make it where the, the public ask us for no more CUPs in the residential area, any kind of CUP. And the, the new codes that we will be working on have made it to where you would have to apply for a variance to get one. It doesn't totally take them out, but it makes it where really the neighbors are going to have to approve. We've made it, a, a, instead of a 200 feet frontage road, it's a 200 foot radius that you cannot have any kind of a CUP within those unless you have a variance. And the public has definitely asked for this. And what has kind of come to my attention is that there's still, there's that loophole of getting in with a B&B &B license, really not living there, just throwing a renter into what may be the living quarters or the area. And the public has asked that we stop doing this. So I agree with Christy. I think a six month moratorium till we get those codes cleaned up would be appropriate. Mm -hmm. Any further, Mr. McClellan? Oh, I just have a, one question for her before I say anything else. And who's, and who's the public? When we were... Other B&B other &B owners? Mm, the, there were other B&B &B owners, the people that came in and talked to us, the people that came and protested when we remember we had like three of them in 2017. We had three applicants and it was just a brouhaha on three of them that people just did not want them. But yet they were approved anyway? One was approved. That was the one on Washington Street. Two were not. Here's, a, and here's another question. In, in her email she mentioned that they're trying to get permits under tourist lodging, which tourist lodging no. is no longer allowed anyway. What, what they're doing, Mr. McClung, is let's say I have a property that, like maybe a duplex. I put a renter on the top, quote unquote, that's my manager, and then I can start renting out the bottom. The people on the top are just renters, they're not really managers. So basically it's just... Rent, you mean renting it out nightly? Yes. Yes. They're, if I'm, and correct me if I'm wrong, they're trying to apply for a, a B and B. Right. Right. But they're really it's overnight lodging. It's overnight lodging. They'll have a quote unquote renter staying well, there. It's kind of reverse of the way I interpreted her email then, because I interpreted it the other way. Yeah. It, yeah. It wasn't super yeah. clear. I knew what she meant because I worked on those code definitions and revisions with her. Okay. Any further discussion? 
Yes, could I have a question for Ms. Green? Sure. Because when we did this before, when we were discussing before and you were on... Right, the, yes. Wasn't there just one, you said there was just one little area of town where there actually could possibly be a new CUP because yes. of the... Yes, but what we've left is there is a variance. I, mm -hmm. If somebody wants to come in and apply in an area of the 200 feet, they can apply with a variance for CUP. And, and what we would do is the Planning Commission could award a variance along with the CUP. And so this, this one that they're uh, afraid of is, is going to be in a, where they needed a variance? No, I, don't, I don't think it's quite come, but there's been people coming down and asking oh, if they uh -huh. can do this. And, oh. you know, there was uh, talk of someone building some stuff to do this. Mm -hmm. And so. Mr. Mr. Mitchell? Just to clear up something. Ms. Green is talking about with the, the variance for the 200 feet. She's talking about the proposed rules, not the current rules that are in place. Mm -hmm. So the, under the current rules in place, there has been a movement by people into town to, to grabbing B&B licenses, and there is more activity in that realm than there ever has been before. So just because there's one really active right now, does. It, there's more following, that's what we're trying to say. But aren't they grabbing existing B&B licenses? No, no. they're, they're no. trying to apply for more. I thought there was only one little area of town. No, that no, no. The new, that's the new code that hasn't, we haven't passed yet. Oh. Right. So they are going under the old code, which is opening all of the residential up still. Right. They, they would just, until we finish working on these codes, are asking us to have a moratorium on CUPs so that we mm -hmm. can at least yay or nay these codes. Further discussion? All right, so we've got a motion to um, have a six months moratorium on B, B and B's and CUPs. Uh, and R1 and R2. And R1 and R2. Uh, for no further discussion, all those in favor of, of the motion as stated, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? So moved. All right, that brings us up to um, our new business of uh, selling North Street. Mm -hmm. Item yes, number eight, motion to motion discuss. discuss. Second. All right, Mr. Mitchell. Yes, I'd like to make a motion that we actively engage the appropriate process for the sale of the property on North Street, uh, probably putting a um, minimum bid in of 100000 Second. Second. Mm -hmm. Already did. Okay. Uh, Mr. McClellan? Uh, I think we'll have to get an, uh, an appraisal first. Mm -hmm. I would, I would yeah, suggest they're going to, it's, I don't think we can set our own price. I think we would, have to get yeah, an appraisal. Would you mind, okay, would you mind taking back your... I'll take back the motion. And, and I'll, take, take, my, back and the I'll second. take my second. I'd make a, a motion that we get an appraisal on North Street and start the process post that of... Uh, selling right. the property. Second. Okay. Further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of getting an appraisal for 25 North Street for sale, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. So moved. All right. That brings us back to uh, unfinished business ordinance number 2266 for second reading. Get a motion to discuss. So moved. Second. Um, Last time we had some uh, figures that were backwards uh, on the uh, what it was going to cost for the uh, self-contained breathing apparatuses and the uh, generators. Uh, we've since gotten that corrected and have gotten the correct prices in there. So I'm not sure, Mr. Weaver, do we need to reread the ordinance or? It would be best if it was to uh, read it in whole and add those changes as amendments. Just to read the uh, entire ordinance? Mm hmm And then as you go through, mention that those are the places for amendment, then vote the amendment, then vote the ordinance. Okay. Can you have a copy of the old ordinance? 
That doesn't look the same. I have one out in my truck, I think. I don't think we'll get it. Yeah, I don't have a copy of it. All those in favor of the reading this ordinance 2266 on a second reading, sing by saying aye. 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 I'm not sure a motion was made. I think we made there one. There was just a motion to discuss and then to the recommendation of the process. Okay. Uh, I make a motion that we read the amended form. <laughs> okay. Who's, okay. Need a second to read the amended form? Second. Okay. Question, sir. Excuse me. Yes, sir. I have a question. Okay. Uh, as I recall, it was it was the the figures were not um, the same. Both there was two locations for the figures, and and they were not identical. That was what the problem was, I believe. Right. And I think since then. And I don't remember which set was <laughs> correct and which wasn't, but but I believe that's what it was. Do you mind leaving that here? Okay. Okay. So, do you want to proceed with Mr. Weaver's recommended? Yeah, if we, yeah, if you if you know if if you're if you know what the, the what the amendment needs to be, then yes. Okay. Yeah, I'm good. Okay. And so we need a vote on. All right. All those in favor of uh, reading the ordinance 22 on. For second amended ordinance 2266 on second reading. Signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Okay. Ordinance number 2266 as amended. An ordinance waiving the requirements of competitive bidding for the purpose of purchasing self contained breathing apparatus and compressor units. Whereas the city of Eureka Springs Fire Department <coughs> is desiring to purchase 10. Scott self-contained breathing apparatus and related accessories for a cost not to exceed $74,921.88 as well as one Scott compressor unit and related accessories for a cost not to exceed $41,535.16 over the next one month period and whereas the fire chief has investigated the manufacturers of the required air packs and compressor to determine the one best desirable for the city to needs and whereas equipment compatibility, safety, and cost efficiency required continued use of proprietary equipment manufactured by Scott Health and Safety with, from the dealer emergency vehicle specialist that is EVS of Conway, Arkansas. Now therefore be it ordained by the City Council of the City of Eureka Springs, Arkansas, Section 1 that pursuant to the provisions of section 3.04.02 of the Eureka Springs Municipal Code, the Council of said city finds that this being an exceptional situation in which the procedure for competitive bidding is deemed not feasible or practical, competitive bidding is hereby specifically waived and the City Fire Department is authorized to purchase up to 10 units of self-contained breathing apparatus manufactured by Scott Health and Safety from EVS at a cost of not more than $74,921.88 and a compatible Scott compressor unit related accessories at a maximum cost of $41,535.16. Purchases shall be completed no later than June 4, 2018. Section 2 that all ordinances or resolutions and parts thereof in conflict herewith are hereby revealed to the extent of such conflict. Section 3, that each of the provisions of this ordinance are severable 
and the decision of any court having jurisdiction as to the validity of any provision shall not affect the remaining provision. <coughs> the one that was read at the previous meeting had the two amounts reversed in the first whereas. The, in section one, The fifth line had an amount of $6,850 and it needed to have been $74,921.88. The last figure in that section was the reverse and is now $41,535.16 and those are the corrections. So two figures were converted and you're right, the fifth line in section one was incorrect. All right. Because it was per unit and I guess the cost went down. Sorry. If I'm understanding correctly. Are you comfortable with that? Yeah. Yeah, I'm fine. I'm, I'm ready to make a motion uh, that we approve the uh, amendment. I think we need to do that first. No. Well, no to approve the ordinance number no, 22. No, I think we have to approve no, the, the amendment, amendment first. first. Okay. You're right. Get a motion to approve the amendment. I'll second that. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor of approving the amendment, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion that we approve ordinance number 2266 on a second reading. Second. Discussion? By title only. Voices okay to approve. All, right. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, so much. Mr. McClung? Yes, Mr. Burr, I'd like to suspend the rules and uh, read ordinance number 2266 for its third and final reading. Second. By title only. Second. Discussion? Yes. Mr. Mitchell? Yes. Mr. McClung? Yes. Ms. Green? Yes. Mr. Thomas? Yes. Ms. Kenny? Yes. The ordinance number is 2266. An ordinance waiving the requirements of competitive fitting for the purpose of purchasing self-contained breathing apparatus and compressor units. Mr. Mayor? Yes, sir. I'd like to approve ordinance number 2266 on its third and final reading. Second. Any further discussion? Okay, hearing none. Mr. Thomas? Yes. Mr. McClung? Yes. Mr. Schneider? Yes. Ms. Green? Yes. Mr. Mitchell? Yes. Ms. Kendrick? Yes. Mr. Mayor? Yes, sir. Mr. Clark. I would like to uh, make a motion that we approve and read emer the emergency clause for ordinance number. 2266 at uh, as they have a timeline of ordering those within one month of now which we're almost late I think but anyway second a discussion Mr. McClung is right we have a, a, a deadline of getting this done by June 4th so that's the reason for the emergency clause otherwise the price will go up Okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Ms. Kendrick? Yes. Ms. Green? Yes. Mr. Thomas? Yes. Mr. Schneider? Yes. Ms. McClung? Yes. Mr. Mitchell? Yes. Six zero. Emergency Clause Section 4. That due to the need to finalize the purchase no later than June 4, 2018, and for the health, welfare, and safety of the citizens of the city, an emergency is hereby declared to exist, and this ordinance shall take effect upon its passage by the Eureka Springs City Council and signed by the Eureka Springs Mayor. Thank you. Uh, all right, that brings us next to the Municipal League's opinion of, of uh, parks rights. Motion to discuss. So moved. Second. Uh, I think I'm not sure if everybody's gotten a copy of. Uh, we, we finally received clarification and copies from 
Municipal League last week uh, from two different attorneys uh, regarding some, several of the questions, uh, plus a couple of ones that I had after uh, reading their their comments. I had additional questions, so open it up for discussion. Yes, ma'am. Um, you refer that on, let me see the third paragraph or second paragraph, on the first page you say um, the validity of the late Leatherwood sales tax has, is a topic that has already has a legal opinion from the Municipal League. All I have ever, I, I don't think I've ever seen anything, I think I've just heard from Mr. Weaver that he spoke to them on the phone. Uh, is there such a legal, uh, written legal opinion? There is not a written legal opinion. At the time, they were in a position to give us an oral opinion, and that is what I received from them. Okay. As you may see, it took two months to get answers to these other questions. So I, I understand. I would just simply like to point out that um, lower on, it apparently that opinion was um, was issued when they still I, apparently they are still missing the language of the Leatherwood sales tax and so no that was provided to them at the time they spoke with me okay they say they say they don't have it so I sent it, I sent it on to them they do have it okay this is, this is a synopsis and uh, I sent it between the March 15th or May 15th after they received that I sent them the language on that because a lot of their statements in here are contingent upon that language such as um, their opinion under number three number three seems to indicate that they have not seen it so I would just like to point that out I would uh, believe that the reference there is to one of the other members of the league than who I spoke with but I'm not going to speak for that he shared it with who when I spoke with him originally so I'm sorry I, I, I feel that the opinion therefore is doesn't address certain issues I'm sorry, would you repeat that? I, uh, because of these dis discrepancies between what is said in this written legal opinion and what you're telling me, I, 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 I don't believe that the op I opinion, I believe the opinion is lacking um, in addressing that issue. If you would like to put your uh, thoughts and get in writing, I'd be glad to forward it on to uh, the Municipal League for their response. That's all I can do. I have sent them the, the uh, information that they had asked for regarding uh, the uh, documents. Uh, I thought their May 22nd clarification uh, and some of those others was a response from that. Uh, they never said that they still needed additional information from me or from the city. So, Mr. McClung? Well, apparently if they thought any different than what they'd already written with the information you provided them, they would have sent a follow-up and they did not. So apparently what they what they stated as what they still believe. Ms. Snyder? Okay, the whole point of this whole thing was in regards to can parks work alongside of the community center regardless of the decision of the city not being involved until certain things were met and basically what they're saying everywhere in here in regards to that and that was the whole point of this question is parks is autonomous 
they will do as they so need to or want to every single response sit here sits here and says um, parks is on their own council cannot say yay or nay like in regards to the uh, greenhouse and whatever else would be going on it has nothing to do with that typo all of this has to do with can they make contracts and deal with community center and they are saying the municipal league is saying yes they can they're autonomous mr mitchell if you read the municipal code you you would know very well that nobody should even question that they're autonomous in that level absolutely i have a couple of questions in here but i'm more interested in mrs kendrick's motion that this that some of this data is possibly tainted because of the wording and the interpretation and some things missing and i know she's not sitting here as our counsel legal counsel but i think with her background if she has raised a question and uh, has been invited to put her concerns in writing to be sent back to the municipal league that we probably shouldn't be taking any action per se on this i do have a question of the uh, lonnie specific to something but i'm not going to ask him at this point but i am going to make a statement about this the ultimate authority for the parks commission rests with the city council their existence rests with the city council the ability to remove a commissioner for cause rests with the city council and it might be very interesting for this council to consider dissolving the parks commission and moving it to a department under the city like the fire police etc and letting justin be the department director that's my comment Ms. Christie I I would just like to clarify that the reason this opinion was obtained has nothing to do with um parks doing business with um the community foundation it had to do with a, a statement that i made in uh council um i believe back in um march perhaps about how i found um several deficiencies in the parks tax and um and in the way um parks the parks commission was reporting to city council and the failure of the city council to appropriate the uh Lake Leatherwood tax um for for purposes so that um parks could use it i find this opinion to to be lacking in addressing the uh, parks tax i also find find it to be lacking in addressing um the fact that we apparently don't have an ordinance that approved the uh Lake Leatherwood master plan upon which the whole tax hinges so yes um i would like to have the opportunity to submit my own questions to the municipal league okay mr thomas i uh, could have a question for ms kendrick Is, is there a reason you don't want to deal with municipal league directly? I I know there's not no reason um I I've called them a couple of times and they've never returned my call but other than that I have no problem with dealing with them directly. I mean if you're going to I'll, I'll write up your questions and stuff would you I would be happy to do that um and I would um I I I would like to have that opportunity if if that's Certainly. Okay, I will do that. Ms. Snyder. Okay, I I don't know why all these things are being all put into one thing other than you contacted them on various goodies. This whole thing is supposed to be in regards to whether Parks has the right to make a contract with the community center. That's what the whole issue is. The other stuff is all different issues. And they sit there on the bottom of page 4, and this is from the Municipal League. I do not believe that the city council has that level of oversight of the parks commission. Importantly, the commission has quote 
the authority to enter into contracts with persons, firms, corporations, or organizations for the use of recreational park buildings or parts thereof, unquote. Arkansas Code Annotated 14-269-203. Finally, the Attorney General has opined that a Parks Commission may contract for services, facility usage, and all purchases. purchases. See Arkansas and so on and so forth. Um, it's very clear from them parks can do what they see fit the city the council whatever cannot say well we aren't going to allow us to do it so therefore you can't according to them everywhere through here parks can do as they need to do they are autonomous they are their own boss. We started the parks situation, oh my God, eons ago for very definite reasons. They are now a very, very viable financial part of this city in regards to drawing people and everything else to sit there and even consider ending it is one of the most horrific city thoughts I've, I've ever come across. It's like whenever we've had local people start something brand new in town, a really great event, and it does super good, three, four, five years, the city decides, well, we're going to take it over and do it right, and the whole thing dies. This has been happening time after time after time, and all those long timers here can sit there and name every single special event that this has been damaged by. Parks is doing a great job. They are doing a phenomenal job. We do not want to micromanage them. We do not want to try to control them. They are the experts. We are not. Mr. Kendricks, you had your hand well, up? I'm, I'll Mr. defer Mr. right now to Mr. Okay. Mitchell. Mr. Mitchell. There's been several questions that, that really haven't been answered yet. And, and yeah, I support the director of parks at this point in his leadership that he has provided. He could easily provide that leadership as a department to the mayor and it would still not affect the ability of parks to be managed appropriately, physically, and, and astutely for the needs. Uh, it can easily be a department. This, this council has been for a good while now discussing various issues of concern regarding the chairperson, the collusion between parks and the community center. Uh, we questioned the ability about the greenhouse because we never really got a full answer about the financial viability of it and we really never got an answer to Alderman Thomas's question about why not the school. Never was that uh, question answered. Was the school greenhouse considered? What happened? Why was it? What was going on? Ne never got an answer to that. We know they spend $7,500 a year at, at uh, Bear Creek out there buying the plants, but how much is it going to cost to do the greenhouse on the community center? We never had a discussion uh, in the past about the various other aspects that have taken place with the Parks Commission in regard to the community center. So we had some very valid questions that were raised about the collusion, it's a good word, between parks and the community center. And they were very valid. And my point is that I believe parks could very easily be a viable, functional, and exceed all expectations as a department. So therefore, I'm going to go ahead and make the motion that the Parks Commission be dissolved in favor of becoming a department of the city with a director. Um, I'll second that. All right. Discussion? Ms. Snyder? How much more stupid can a city be to take a viable entity and screw with it? When we made Parks Department, and I was here, you weren't, most of you weren't, some of us were, we went through hell and back to come up with a proper 
workable unit. We had to get special permission from state to write this up. We were the originators of this parks. The whole setup, the whole thing, them being autonomous. And they were made autonomous so you couldn't have people like you and you and you saying, I don't want them around my backyard. I don't want them here. I don't even like trees. Or any of the other mundane, stupid things that get thrown out there for five million reasons all over the world. This is ridiculous. They are bringing in people. Why do we need people? Because that's our only business. Right now, they are the most viable financial resource that we have, and they know what they're doing. And they can do it and do it well because nobody else can sit there and say, well, my friends don't like you. My friends don't want this. I'm responding to my friends. It keeps all of us out of their business and lets them get the job done. Did any of you, anybody in this room, go down to Lake Leatherwood this holiday weekend, Eureka's biggest weekend of the year? Anybody? And what did you see? It was packed. It was packed. My son and his family came down and spent four days down there in one of the brand new little teeny tiny cabins. It was awesome. My six-year-old granddaughter caught her first fish in Lake Leatherwood. It was the coolest thing I've ever seen, her little face. Now, are any of you going to be able to sit there and promote, handle, or do what they have done because we have had to keep our hands off of them and let them do their job. They know what they're doing. We don't. All we're doing is supposedly representing the people by sitting there trying to micromanage and screw with something that's working is the worst damn thing you can do to this town. Mr. McClung? The, uh, Mr. Mitchell use, uses the word collusion, and I consider it a partnership. Big difference. And then the, the other thing is, as far as uh, dissolving the Parks Commission, uh, it, it, I, yeah, I certainly don't feel that's the right direction to go either. Um, you know, it may not be perfect, but but it is truly one of the strong points of the community as far as, as, far as volunteerism goes. It's uh, uh, it's there's a, so many people that are involved in parks, from the commissioners to the trails people. Um, it, it, it's it's just. I think you kill it. I think I think you would kill it. I think you would have a probably an uprising in town if you tried to do it. I'll lead it. Um, uh, I'm I am totally against that. I just do not believe that would be the right direction to go. Mr. Mr. Huss is, his his abilities are great and he's and he's good and 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 the the confines that he's working under now are are great. Uh, you know, I, I think I think we're okay. That's my observation. Mr. Thomas? Well, I think that the primary concern with, with the way Parks is operating now is, is something that Mickey was talking about, doing things for friends, uh, doing special things for friends that you don't do for, for everybody else in the community. That's the concern. <sighs> that I've heard from, from that, that's my concern and that's concern that I've heard from a lot of people in the community. So I'm, you know, it's not, having a parks commission doesn't eliminate doing things for your friends. Anybody else? It, what, is, what is tightening the strings through planning commission for CUPs when that was issued, initiated by people in the same business as well. I mean, what's it, you know, friends are friends. This is a small town. I mean, we're a small community and we're pretty darn tight-knit. So, you know, I, 
I think the idea stinks. Mr. Weaver? Before you dissolve a department or a commission, I think you need to refer back to what the Municipal League has said in your synopsis, at least briefly, that doing so can create a world of problems. Point until, of order. Until you know what point those of problems. order. What is your point? I don't believe, I believe that the city attorney is speaking as a city council member and not in his role as an attorney. He's I am speaking problem. my He's legal getting, opinion at this point, he ma'am. Getting, he is giving a legal opinion. Huh? And I'm okay. asking you to refer to the legal opinion that was given by the Municipal League to this council at their request. And it tells you very plainly in there that to interfere with removal of a commission can interfere with contract and constitutional issues that need to be addressed before you do said act. So if you want to dissolve the commission, do it right. Don't do it in a hurry. Don't do it at a whim. Make sure you know what contracts they have. Make sure you know what other issues that may lie there that get this city sued because that is what I'm here for as the legal counsel of this city is to try to protect the city from getting sued as often as possible and part of what the municipal league said was make sure you understand before you dissolve a commission what that means Mr. Mitchell I'm going to read Ask the second of my motion to rescind it, and I'm going to change it. Oh, yes, I will. Okay, I withdraw my motion. I make a new motion that we ask the city attorney to draft up what is necessary that would need to be done in the process of potentially looking at removing the Parks Commission, moving it to a department of the city with a director. Second. And I want to finish my discussion with after that. Mickey's emotional argument is very true, and I totally understand it. But there's a person sitting right here that's perfectly capable. All of those subcommittees, all of those volunteers, all those people will very clearly respond to this director who reports directly to the mayor, who's the administrator of the city. Everything else is totally in place. The finance department will be looking at <coughs> the financial issues going through them. Justin will be overseeing relations with the public, promoting the, the trails, and he'll be doing it with subcommittees, committees, and volunteers. Nothing takes away, nothing takes away community spirit, nothing takes away the operations of the parks department nothing takes away their incentive to continue to make it the best part possible it rests the ability with the mayor and the department head as it should and very easily can happen the city council will not be micromanaging it you are wrong alderman snyder completely because again the mayor is the administrator with the director so there is a lot of advantage to streamlining and potentially bringing it in and again it will not and should never affect the ability of that parks to be exactly what it has grown to be that is the end of my discussion Ms. Schneider so you're saying the city won't be micromanaging what the hell do you call what you're trying to do right now in regards to parks and the community <coughs> center and the city council that my dear is called micromanaging now just because they know what to do and they still like Justin and he would know what to do doesn't mean you or anybody else on any council at any time can keep your stupid little fingers out of there let them do their job just because you don't like something or you were misunderstood doesn't mean you take it out on them and I can tell you now as a long timer the people in this town will revolt if you try to sit there and cancel their whole thing and I will help lead them Mr. Thomas I'm not ready to dissolve 
parks tonight. Uh, that would be something I'd want to work on for quite a while. But I, I have something I don't understand. I haven't understand it. Hundreds stood it for a few, few months now. How can you be autonomous if somebody can dissolve you? I, that's I don't understand that. It's, I think we still have some some control over parks. I think we still have some incentive for them to to try to work with us, and I think it's possible. I think we just put a whole new breath of fresh air on the commission, Parks Commission tonight, and uh, I, I think it's possible to change the way some operations are going. But what is the difference between being, how can you be autonomous if somebody can dissolve you? It is very much like uh, I would equate it to having a superior in any business. That superior ultimately can fire you, but if they trust you, they allow you the way with all to do your job. I agree. And the job in this instance of the commission is to run the parks. And unless you have completely lost confidence as their boss and want to remove them, they're autonomous in that they can do their day-to-day -day actions. They're able to go in and make contracts. They're able to go in and do certain things. Ultimately, yes, the city council sets above them and has the right to dissolve them. A boss in a factory can go to an underboss and relieve them of their duties if they believe they're not doing those duties properly. But they leave them with the autonomous ability to function on their day-to-day -day work. And I'd like, just like to say, I have not totally lost confidence in parks. I'm not ready to dissolve it. Mr. Kendrick? It is not so simple. Parks is not as autonomous as all that. Ms. Snyder has latched on a few words out of this opinion and not read the rest of it. For example, City Council has total control over the appropriation of the Lake Leatherwood tax. And as far as I know, we have not appropriated it to the Parks Commission for their use indiscriminately. We have control over how that money is spent and not spent. Yes, maybe the parks can contract with the community foundation, but they are going to, if, if, that's, if they're going to do that autonomously and independently, then they are going to have to report to city council as to what actions they are taking autonomously and independently with the funds that they um, receive from the, or the profits from their operations as opposed to what they do with the funds that come from that tax. And City Council has total control over that tax within the boundaries of the, within the boundaries um, that was stated in um, the passage of the tax that it be used for Lake Leatherwood. But City Council can specify that it be used for specified purposes within Lake Leatherwood. And so, no, Parks is not totally autonomous. It's autonomous to a certain extent, just like an employee, but not fully. Mitch McClung? I just wanted to say that Parks has already agreed to, to submit reports on anything and everything it does to the council according to what ever guidelines uh, that are out there. Um, um, and, and, you know, maybe it wasn't done in the past, but I doubt that a lot of the people that are on Parks now were aware of what their reporting requirements are. But once found out, uh, you know, they've, they've agreed to produce it. I know that they already do it. They have it. They, you know, they're... They have to provide an audit, so I mean, you know, anything you want to look at, I'm sure it's available to you at any time. Ms. Green? Um, I'm not ready at this time to dissolve parks either. I think what Mr. Mitchell and, and Ms. Kendrick and even myself, I've gotten a, a lot of concerns about partnering with private entities, and I, I think that's what has stimulated a lot of this conversation and why these questions were asked. And I 
agree with what Christy's saying. I think we do have control over the tax and we have control of what they do with that tax. So, I don't know. I just, I, I'm going to just say I'm not ready at this time to, to consider that. Ms. Snyder? There's four people in this room that were in this town when this whole parks thing went through. We know what we had to go through to get this done. We know how long it took. We know how hard we had to work with the state and everything else. I have never, ever, ever used the term total autonomous. I have never implied total autonomous. I have said they are autonomous, and they are. The only thing we have to do with the parks tax is in making it an official election thing on the ballot. They are the ones who come up with taxes where they need it. We discuss it. We agree, yes, this tax will be going to parks and they will be utilizing whatever. Just like it's stated in the thing. They have to get us to approve it for the ballot because that's how it works with elections. They do their own thing. We do not need to be telling them how to. We do not have to be holding their hands or anything else. That's why we worked it out with the state decades ago to make this a proper and well-run situation which it is. To think about dissolving it is ridiculous. Mr. Mitchell. I'd like the city clerk to read my mass last motion, please. I can read the bones of it. That's but fine. not all the words involved. That's okay. okay. I'll take what you've got and see what it was. Mr. Mitchell made the motion to ask the city attorney to draw up appropriate papers and do what's necessary to dissolve parks and create a department. The attorney to draw up, which would still have Did to Did I come. not say the city attorney? I'm just clarifying it, madam. Did I say the city attorney? I said I just was clarifying that. Yes. Yes, yes you, you've okay. repeated it multiple times. I got your point. <coughs> you don't need to continue it. So uh, come on. Let's what's your point? I'm moving on past you because I'm finished with it. So my oh, point wait. behind it, it, keep it up. Just keep it going. Come on. Mr. Come on. Mitchell. Ed, Ed, Mitchell, ah. both of you. Mr. Mitchell, go ahead. Yes, it is. Mr. Mitchell, please. Both sides. Continue. Both ways. It's two-way street. So my point behind this whole thing is this. Very clearly, the commission needs to understand that there is a problem with what's been going on with parks the commission and possibly a fair number of people sitting at the council table. Council is not necessarily happy with what's been going on, nor with the, the, the ability with the Leatherwood tax or other aspects that have been taken place. And it would probably behoove them to take a serious look at what's gone on at this table and consider making some changes uh, on their own to possibly reinvent themselves to be more in line with some of the concerns that this body seems to have expressed. And obviously that's for them to do at this point. But my motion very clearly was changed and it wasn't to dissolve them, but it was to have the attorney look at what would be required. And I think the attorney should look at that uh, and see what it is and inform counsel exactly what that entails since he brought it up that there is a lot of, of aspects about that that we would have to consider. And at the same time he's doing that, very clearly the commission ought to take a good look at themselves, their leadership and everything else. Ms. Kendricks? Uh, in response to Ms. Schneider's comments about the, the Lake Leatherwood tax, I'd like to read from the opinion, the Municipal League opinion, it says, thus, the City Council does control the fund, that's referring to the Lake Leatherwood sales tax, but the funds can only be used for those purposes relating to Leatherwood City Park. Ultimately, the policy 
policy decisions of funding the Parks Commission is up to the city and can only be addressed by City Council. Ms. Schneider? Um, yeah, that's exactly what I said. It takes the council to get the tax to take care of parks. No, we cannot tell them how to write their checks. We can make sure that they've got the funds and it's used for Lake Leatherwood. That's what we can do. As far as no one has a problem with parks, um, I think they have a problem and have had a problem since January 8th when because of a problem with somebody else, Parks got dragged into all of this and it's ridiculous. They have nothing to do with anything but they are being picked on because they want to go ahead and do their job. I'm going to say it one last time. Dissolving this is the biggest damn mistake this city could make. We did not work on this decades ago to have a landmark decision. Something that has been utilized across the country, not just in Carroll County, we are known for starting what our parks is set as. So yeah, let's go ahead and let personal involvement dissolve that. That's brilliant. Okay, any further discussion? If not, uh, Madam Clerk, would you read the uh, motion back again one more time for a vote? Ask the city attorney to draw up documents and do what's necessary to dissolve parks and create a department. No further discussion. Let's have a roll call. Uh, one last thing. I'd like to amend that motion to clarify that the attorney is to draw those documents up. It'll come back for review by council before any action is taken. Second. I'm not sure what you're asking. I'm asking Mr. for Mitchell. the attorney to I mean, draw we can't take any action anyway. I want to be sure that the motion doesn't read like that we've already made the decision in any way, shape, nor form to dissolve the council. We're asking the attorney who said that there is a lot into considering before you dissolve it that we're asking the attorney to, to develop or list out or explain to us in some form or fashion exactly what is involved before we would ever consider or vote on disbanding the commission. I want to be sure that he is providing us with the factual information of what is involved before we would even consider that topic. I want to, he I want to hear what that is. Okay, That's what so I'm trying to get to. I, I'm not sure we need the amendment, but the amendment to clarify. Okay, I would send the amendment and if, if the motion. I mean, no, the city council can't do anything. Okay. Could we just put it We on can't do anything until the city council votes on it. Okay. As, as long as people understand that we're not, we're not dissolving them based on that, we're just getting You're information. You're just making a motion to have them drop so the paper. So you can dissolve it. Wait. See what it takes to dissolve it. Okay. Well, absolutely. Yes, ma'am. I just... I see what David's saying. Couldn't we just put it on our agenda as a discussion? Ask for the info. Just have the, have Mr. Weaver bring us the information. We can discuss it. It, it will be on the agenda when it gets done. Okay. So, so does it need a motion then? There is a motion. There is a motion. Does it, that motion need to stand or can that be on the agenda and still achieve what I was mentioning? As soon as Mr. Weaver gets the information, if this motion passes and he develops that information, he'll present it to the council for the council's review. Okay, so it needs a motion for him before he can do that. That's what I'm saying. Right now we need a motion for, to direct him to do this. Okay, that's what I wanted to know. Thank you. There was an amendment in the second. Are you, uh, are you withdrawing your um, amendment or leaving? He did rescind his amendment. He, he received oh, he did? it. Okay, then I rescind my second of his amendment. Okay, so we're back to the original motion. What? Yes, ma'am. Just to clarify, if I vote yes 
to have this done. It's it's basically it's not a done deal. It's nothing. It's just going to be brought here for us to discuss. May I hear? Him? Yes, sir. Uh, the way I take this, and, and so maybe we need better clarification if this is not what is intended, is you're authorizing me to start spending money to figure out what it takes if you guys decide to vote in the future and to prepare the documents and the procedure that you would go through in order to destroy the commission and place it back as a department. I find your choice of words destroy <laughs> to be most interesting. Uh, I and I find it to be order, slanted. Well, I'm, right. I'm going to go ahead. Question. Okay, Mr. Mayor. We got it. We got a motion. All those in favor of calling the question sing by, by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. So back to the original motion. And you want a roll call? Roll call vote. Can we have the motion? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. McClellan. No. Motion. Excuse me? I, I've gotten lost on what the, what the motion is. Do you want the, re the motion reread? Yes. Yes. We, we've okay. got to I'm sorry. All right. Reread the motion Amy one more time. A motion to ask the city attorney to draw up the necessary paperwork and do what's I'm not sure what that phrase was, and do what's necessary to dissolve parks and create a department. Okay, thank you. Is that the motion, Mr. Mitchell? Not, not exactly, no. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, we call the question and approve right. it. Let's go. Yeah, all right. Roll call vote. Mr. Thomas? No. Ms. Green? No. Ms. Kendrick? Yes. Ms. Schneider? Nope. Mr. Mitchell? Yes. Four, excuse me, two, four. All right, motion fails. All right. We go on to our next order of business. Yeah. All right, what? Before we move on, if Ms. Kendrick is going to supply questions to the municipal league, I don't want to have an input on what her questions are, but as the chief legal counsel of the city, I would like that she submit a copy of those to me. So if I'm questioned by the municipal league, I will know what I'm responding to. Okay. I, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm confused. She'd like a copy of your request. Request. Not, not pre-approval. Not pre-approval. Pre okay. Just your okay. request. Okay, copy you. of what they are. Okay. I don't think he he dare to. Uh, no. No. Just I want, just I want, want to get to Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, all right, our, our last item of uh, business is uh, the audit and data, data from the Community Center Foundation when available. Uh, and talking with uh, Ms. Murphy, her, their accountant has uh, out of town and they are trying to get this scheduled probably for the last meeting in June. And he will present to the council at that point. So that's all I know on that. Uh, brings us to an agenda setting. Ms. Snyder. Um, do we need to add this uh, buzzard thing to the agenda? Is that something you do? Uh, this one? Well, that's what I mean, for the next meeting. Well, maybe. I mean, we can... Unless we can see if you want to add, uh, add it to the next meeting. I, I, that's what I'm asking you. Are we? We have we have it? fought this bird for a long time. Uh, well, I know that's I'm why. I'm not sure the council can do anything. The council well, wants to bring we it can't. up. I didn't know if you wanted to reiterate that at the next meeting or not. <laughs> I'll reiterate it. Uh -huh. We're still trying to see what we can do. Well, that's what I was asking if he was going to add it or if I needed to. I I can bring it up. Okay. Thank you, Mr. McClellan. Uh, yes, I would like to uh, add for not the next meeting, but the second meeting in June, I would like to uh, projected schedule of sewer and water repairs. Uh, I mean, it's time to get moving with this stuff. I'll second that. Okay. Anybody else? All right. Council comments. Uh, 
Mr. Mitchell. Yes, I, I'm going to make several comments back to something that was said at the uh, public comments about being debt free. It wasn't just the mayor and the director of finance that wanted the city to achieve a debt free status. If I'm not mistaken, I think it was unanimous that the city council sat here and agreed to that concept. So we all share in the hope, the desire, and by taking action that this city would move towards a less indebtedness than it has ever probably had in its past. Looking back, and it wasn't just done so we could eliminate an SEC uh, audit by any means that was brought up as, as, as something that could happen. But it was brought up on the basis that we wanted to be debt free. We wanted to turn that money into a huge amount of money that would then be plowed back into the infrastructure. And if people will go back and take a look at that council meeting and that particular topic, we very clearly discussed that the I and I funds are not really going to be used in, in reducing this indebtedness and they are available now for infrastructure changes and in work. It is not that there is not going to be money to repair stuff. It's going to be that basic just what Mr. McClung said by adding it, we need a schedule for some of the work now. This council is the ones that push to get the um, equipment so we could start identifying water leaks. It was this council that put in, or the council before this, I believe it was actually, that put in the issue of changing out the water meters when we were told that that was the major source of the leaks, which obviously we have found out is not the case. But we went ahead and did it anyway, which was great, because we needed to change those water meters. But obviously that wasn't the problem. Now there's been leaks identified up at the top of Planter Hill and we're into the major tourist season, so guess what? That's not going to get repaired. So Mr. McClung is right. This council is going to have to take a very active and stronger approach in the repairs and it's not because we don't have the money to be doing some of them, we do. And if the problem comes up that we don't have enough employees and or the ability to handle it in public works, then we certainly should look at the option of contracting it out. Because we certainly looked at that for the water meters and we're convinced it wasn't necessary. And then it took how many years? And I'm not too sure we're still to 100%. So debt free uh, is a big deal. And as far as bringing up a parking deck, you want to spend a whole bunch of the city's money for a parking deck that's not going to be a fi viable financial op op uh, option. Uh, I agree parking is a problem, but building a parking deck that uh, has been explored in the past multiple times doesn't create enough spaces to be financially viable. So some of those discussions, while they sound altruistic and sound pretty good on a campaign <coughs> platform, they're not necessarily viable. That's all I have to say. Ms. Gray? Um, I'm going to ditto a lot of what Mr. Mitchell just said. When I voted for the amortization, my thoughts were kind of what he was saying, but it was for a huge chunk of money a few years up the road, not to band-aid things like that's what we're doing constantly, but to where we can start the projects that really need to be started and have the money to start them. And nothing is ever perfect, but I think that was an incredibly good idea of the council. They did it before I was here, and I applaud them for doing that. Ms. Snyder? Well, ironically, I was planning on talking about parks tonight and the great weekend that my son and daughter-in-law and two grandkids, my husband and I and my dog, all enjoyed down at Lake Leatherwood. When I moved here March 1st of 44 of 74, we lived on <laughs> we lived on that original bridge right there at Leatherwood, on the old bridge. Okay, and there was strictly a pavilion and three or four fire pits. What they have done now with Lake Leatherwood has been phenomenal. There was a little teeny fish bait thingy that was open sometimes. 
other than that, we stayed in, my son stayed in one of their new little camping cabins. Um, I believe it's being known as like a permanent teepee. Something like that, you know, a rainproof teepee. Better than what you had. Um, <laughs> they are so cute, they're itty bitty little. But all you're going to do is sleep because you're at the park. You're playing, you're, you're walking around, you're playing with your kids, you're doing all kinds of stuff. All you're going to do there is sleep. You've got a beautiful, huge deck that's been put together beautifully. Everything out there was totally awesome. The kids had a super great time. My son always brings his family to Lake Leatherwood because that's pretty much where he was raised, was Lake Leatherwood. They all love it. I want to see it keep going. I can't believe how much it's grown and changed. It's gone from one pavilion to I don't know how many cabins and showers and this and that. And it's like, oh my God, this place is great. You need to take time to go out there and have a picnic. If you do nothing else, take your stuff, go down to a grill, make your steaks, your burgers, whatever, and just sit back and relax and enjoy Mother Nature because that's what the parks are there for. Thank you. Mr. Thomas? I'd just like to say congratulations to our newest parks commissioner who just <laughs> came into the room. Yeah. We voted you in in case you didn't yeah. get that. And thank you for your willingness to serve. Thank you. I would just like uh, to say that I believe the Parks Commission is undergoing a crisis of confidence when two city council persons are prepared to um, basically Im implode the um, commission, as, as the city attorney put it. Um, I think that they really need to consider um, their responsibility to the city council and um, the, the, and they also need to uh, respect the power that the city council does have over the Parks Commission and I hope that they take all of this to heart and start considering all of that. Mr. McClung? Uh, I just would like to uh, concur with Mr. Mitchell on the um, indebtedness in that um, the idea of getting debt free also enables us to go back in debt because there's unsewered areas there's a lot of things that 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 we can do um, if we can go back into debt um, it's if it's it, I mean you're naive to think that that the city will not be in debt because we will I mean there's just so much to do uh, but it, it enables us to get to where we can do that again. We're not in a position to borrow money now. And uh, so you know, that's, that, was, that was my foundation for it. Uh, because it enables us to, to improve, improve, improve our borrowing position tremendously. Right, which right now we, we haven't got any. Um, I agree that uh, as far as the Securities and Exchange Commission, I've never heard of them yet going in and, and uh, pulling the plug on anybody. And uh, I've always been a proponent that as long as you pay your bills, they're not ever going to say a word. But, you know, that, but that was never my concern on any of this anyway. Uh, so, uh, you know, I'm, 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 I'm pleased with the direction we're taking there. I think it's, it's a solid, uh, you know, we're going to make mistakes, but it's, 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 it's the right way to go. It's proactive, and and uh, and I and I believe in parks, and I'm just going to leave it at that. All right. Uh, as far as comments goes, we've got uh, some activities coming up this uh, coming month, starting with uh, this next week on May the 30th. Uh, we got the Mayfest closing dinner from 3 to 9 p.m., uh, which will be on Center Street. From uh, uh, be setting up a little area there, right around the uh, Devito's area. Uh, then on the 31st through the 3rd will be Mustang weekends. Uh, it's going to be all day and throughout the weekend. 
starting out at uh, Eureka Inn in the Pine Mountain Village. The Mustang Parade will be on Saturday the 2nd starting at 4 p.m. and starting out at Pine Mountain Village and then go around the Upper Loop and back down Spring Street and back into Pine, down the mountain. Uh, <coughs> and then uh, on the 2nd also that evening will be drumming in the park, in the Basin Park. And on the 8th and 9th is a Fiber Folk Art Conference, uh, which will be up at uh, End of the Ozarks all day up there. And then on the 9th will be the second Saturday gallery stroll, 6 to 9 p.m. on the downtown galleries. And I also want the citizens to know that on the 4th we will be starting the Flint Street Tunnel construction. Uh, City of Rick Springs uh, will start the repairs Great. to Flint Good Street uh, beginning on June 4th. The intersection of Flint, Jackson, Flint, and North Main will be closed for the duration of this project. We will be maintaining one-lane traffic uh, between North Main and Flint First Street and Armstrong. Uh, we're going to have a project that's completed in 30 days. So if you've got any questions or comments, uh, call the Public Works, 253-9600. Uh, so we're finally getting that job done. Unfortunately, we couldn't get it when we started for a lot of different reasons. Usually most of it was government red tape, but we finally got it in and... and uh, are going with it. So, get a motion to uh, adjourn. So moved. Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. Thank you all. So, we're going to be at one lane traffic for.